everyone, it's Hexis here. Today I want to talk about the garden and decorations because they are a lot of stat bonuses and they are part of almost every event in game right now. Plus I have been receiving a lot of messages on Discord with questions like how the different type of decorations work, how do their stats take effect, where can we see these effects in our battle reports and which orange decorations are the best in my opinion etc. Oh, and I would also love to share with you a big achievement I was waiting for a long time, so make sure to watch until the end. Okay, so you already know about the different colors for decorations like blue, purple and orange and each one of them have their own special stats and bonuses. For example, the blue decorations will give either attack of archers or mages, or it increases the HP of infantry or cavalry. But when it comes to purple decorations, it will go into a general term like increasing attack boost by 2% or HP boost by 2% so it affects the entire army instead of one or two troop types. And finally, the orange decorations will bring special skills as well. You can only get these decorations by participating in events and by completing requirements specific to that event. For example, in the Realm Banquet event that's going on right now, you need to acquire a specific number of prestige in order to unlock these boxes and inside each of them there will be a decoration as well. Now an exception to this is the Archangel event where you have to exchange event scrolls to get the decorations. By the way, there are also these God of War statues. The Ares statue is obtained from the Brave Valley event and the Athena statue from War of Frontiers. They are built differently as well. So instead of getting them as a whole like the decorations, you receive special tokens that are needed to build or upgrade these statues. When you're inside the garden in the sky building, you see a line at the bottom which says decoration skills and stats don't need the decoration to be placed to take effect. So don't be shocked if nothing appears to have changed in your stats percentage when you get a new decoration item for the first time and then you place it, because it already changed the moment you acquired it. However, when you get extra pieces, you have to upgrade the decoration for the stats to change, which will then be applied permanently. So if you remove the decoration afterwards, there won't be any change again. Now this is very useful, especially when you want to place a new decoration, which also takes up a lot of space. Like the decoration set, for example. Some of you might have experienced an issue where even if you try to place a piece, nothing happens. Now this is because there was not enough space and so you need to remove or move the existing decorations around to find more space for the new one to be placed. Note that the battle reports won't show the effects from blue and purple decorations explicitly. The stats will simply be added to the existing percentage unless it's something new that you didn't have before, like the enemy troops attack reduction or the enemy troops hit points reduction. Alright, let's dive into the world of orange decorations. The good thing about them is that they bring special skills right from level 1 onwards. An important thing to know here is the name of the skill because that's what will be listed in your battle reports. Usually they are shown within inverted commas in the description except for the candy castle decoration where fairy tale blessing is the skill but it's not within inverted commas. In a battle report all these skills are listed under decoration skills as you see here for example. Oh and one more thing. God of our statues are different here as well. The skill Palace Armor is from Athena statue and Fury Force is from the Ares statue. In order for them to be unlocked, the statues need to be at minimum level 21, unlike normal orange decorations which give the special skill already at level 1. Now on to my top 3 picks from the orange decorations. Keep in mind that this list is only based on their stats and skills and not based on the cost of acquiring them. The uh, first one is the Phantom Playground and the skill is called Ghost Phantom. This one you get from the Realm Banquet event that's going on right now. So when the battle starts, all of your friend line and angels get a damage reduction along with reducing the attack of enemy troops which again impact their total damage output. So a good thing here is that there is no time limit for the skill and also it is applicable to all your friend line troops. The second one is the Countryside Party Decoration and its skill is called Morale Deterrence. It reduces damage bonus effects of enemy backline and angels by 1.8%. So let's say your enemy has mage damage increase against infantry by 7.8%. Now this orange decoration skill at level 1 will reduce that bonus to 6%. In addition to that, the skill increases the hit points of one of your front row troops with the most soldiers by 2%. 
third one is the star collection decoration which brings the tenacious skill and with this one your front row troops with most soldiers will get 1.5% damage reduction along with an additional damage reduction of 1.5% from angels. Also orange decorations like Poseidon's warship, castle in the sky and love in the city. They also have very good skills but they didn't make my list because their skills have a time limit. And also here note that Poseidon's domain has two different conditions. It is applicable for the first 15 seconds in battles if you're doing that within the realm and it lasts for 25 seconds in cross realm battles. Star Ruins battles qualify as cross realm battles by the way in case you didn't know. Let's also talk about the God of War statues. They do have decent skills and they are actually the easiest to achieve for budget players since we don't have to spend a lot at once to get them unlike the orange decorations. For example, you can spend around $10 per event to get the special tokens required to upgrade the statues. But of course then, be ready to have a lot of patience as well. So what I would recommend doing if you are a budget player, just consider them as small side projects and upgrade them slowly. Finally, my achievement that you have been waiting for. Well, after all this time, I got Excalibur to 6 stars, unlocking that very powerful 11% troops damage stat bonus. Excalibur is the easiest artifact to max out even if you are a free to play player. I normally say that you shouldn't exchange orange soul stones in the artifact shop to get Excalibur fragments because you get them for free every week in the monster swarm event. But in order to speed up the process to complete the last rank, I did buy the fragments from the exchange shop using the orange soul stones. So yeah, basically you can cheat a little bit when you're really close to upgrading to the next level. Along with this, check out the difference in my fiend trial points before and after evolving the artifact. So that's it for today. Hope you all learned something new about the decorations and garden in the sky. If you still got questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. See you again next time with another fun topic. Goodbye guys.